How's it going, Pepfinity? And we got ourselves another emergency little stinkers. I was never going to do a video on Nickelback because I'm with you. It's low hanging fruit. It's the lowest hanging fruit. And the jokes aren't even funny. They haven't been funny in like 20 years. Like Nickelback sucks. Yeah, I know. I like your pants around your feet. But like, so there was never going to be a Nickelback Stinks video. <laughs> but San Quentin, I mean, there's so many problems here. It's, it's, I, I had to, you know? So, but I'm not giving it a full what makes this song stink, only a little stinkers. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, little stinkers are kind of like, you know, like my, the shitty little fish that like swim under the big whales. Like the what makes this song stink would be like, you know, my blue whale, humpback whale, gray whale. I don't know the last time you saw a gray whale. It's a tough look. They're not making the cover any National Geographic's anytime soon, but you know, they don't know that. So good on the gray whale. So yeah, what makes this song stinks, big whales. Little stinkers of the shitty little fish, because I don't really have to do that much. They're shorter videos, but I still have to listen to this song, so it's actually not the shitty little fish. Like, it'd be more like bass player Coldplay. I mean, what's that guy doing? Like, he's playing bass on Yellow, you know? It's like, got the Coldplay money. Nobody knows who he is. I don't even think he has a name. I think his name is Guy. Like, he doesn't even have a name. Like, that guy can go to Target, no problem. No one's, no one's harassing him or anything, but he has to deal with the ego. You know, and you know, so there's a little bit of something there. He's not just sitting in the cold play money laying around. He's he's got to deal with the ego. So that's kind of what little stinkers are. The bass player cold play. <laughs> yeah. So that's what it is. Welcome. Um, and also to all the people out there that are following the simple plan. There's there's much to report there, and I will be doing that in a separate video. But like I said, this is an emergency because <laughs> San Quentin. It's like they made it for me. I mean, they handed this to me. So there's three reasons why I'm choosing to do Nickelback right now. And the first one is, is that they It's My Life to the video. Uh, there's one thing I, if, I don't know what's worse. It's My Life the song or It's My Life the video. Cause let me remind you, it starts like with like this teenage girl is like in the tunnel and she's like, where are you to her teenage boyfriend? Where are you? You're what? missing it. Get down here right now. Wh where are you? We're in the tunnel. You have five minutes. And it was just like, you gotta get down here to watch like a 48 year old Tico Torres playing a new Bon Jovi song and the kid like runs to get there and he barely gets there. He had Bon Jovi posters on his wall. He used to like kiss his mom goodbye. His mom would be the one that was going to the show. And then, you know, he gets there and he sees like David Bryant up there with David Bryant and Jesus Christ. Anyway, so like, yeah, that kid needed to get down there. Big Bon Jovi fans in like 2000, you know? So, so they It's My Life, but they didn't just It's My Life, they up the fucking ante because you, you gotta see how this video starts. All right, so we got a stage getting set up. You know, there's a skateboarder because they're cool. You know what I mean? A lot of skaters are in a nickelback. And then uh, it looks like attractive girl, another attractive girl. Only attractive young girls are getting messages from nickelback. And we can only assume that the back is on campus, right? Now that's laughable on its own, but you gotta listen to what kind of message they're getting. Maybe you thought tornado warning, hurricane warning. I went with Amber Alert uh, because that happens the most. And if you're not familiar with what the Amber Alert is, uh, in the United States we have a thing where it's if a child is abducted, kidnapped, uh, you will get a message on your phone. Everybody does. If you're in a restaurant, you'll see it. Everybody gets it and it makes that sound. And that because a child has been abducted and they're telling you like, look out for Toyota Camry. And uh, you know, most people go back to eating the fucking nachos. But at the same time, it's something that's the fucking Amber Alert. Uh, so they went from maybe thinking that there was a missing child to, oh, Nickelback is on our campus and they're playing a new song. Uh, so we better get over there, you know? This would be like the equivalent of like someone screaming fire in a movie theater and you're like, holy shit, and you get up and you're like probably trampling on each other and you're fighting and you're thinking you're gonna die and you're like, can I breathe and all of that stuff? And then you try to make it out to the lobby and you get to the lobby and instead of it like being fire, no, it's just Nickelback, you know, plugged in, ready to go and just being like, hey, we just wanna let you guys know we got a new one, you know, like that. <laughs> That's essentially how they're letting people know that they have a new song about not wanting to go to jail. So they, they could have went with the text. So the whole 
Campus is in an uproar. They get to the stage, and what do they hear? 47-year-old man who's now gone full Hetfield, but not like, he's gone like reload Hetfield. Like, <laughs> this isn't even load Hetfield. He's gone for the reload Hetfield look. Now, these are some music lovers. I mean, you can tell. They all love, they all love new songs. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really happy to be listening to a song that they've never heard before. But crowds usually always do freak out for a new one. You know, it's one of my favorite things when I'm at a concert and like the band's like, we're gonna whip out a new one. We've, we've never played this one before. And then you see people like running down from the concession lines. They wanna get back to their seats to hear the song that they never heard before so that they can really like jump up and down and be animated and have their phones uh, watching these men. Are you fucking kidding me? This is unbelievable. I had to. If Nickelback was playing a free concert on campus, would you go? Absolutely not. Is there beer? No. Probably not. No. I don't know what You don't know where Nickelback is? No. Definitely not. Okay, what genre of music that means? Good point. Free show, yeah. Okay, do you like Nickelback? Uh, I don't really know much of their music, but if it was free, I'd go. It's just, okay, so let me ask you this. If All there right. was like a landfill, but it was free, but you get like uh, two slices of pizza, would you go? Yeah. All right, so you'd go to the landfill, go to the landfill. For, for two free slices of yeah. pizza, just like you would go to a Nickelback show. Yeah, sure. Right. Would you ride your skateboard? Yeah, if it was close. How's that apple? Delicious. Let's take a bite. Thanks a lot. Get to class. Let's get this circus on the road. We're taking bets on how far this tank of gas will go. These songs about driving until you run out of gas or that we're gonna drive all night long. Like these people think, why do we, why the enough of these driving songs? No one wants to drive. Like, can you imagine just getting in your car and be like, man, I can't wait to get out there and see how much construction's on the road tonight. You know, hopefully we run into a lot of tolls. You know, and, and and we'll see gas stations, but I don't want a snack. No way. I just want to keep driving. And then like your buddies see you getting on the road, and they're like, "Where are you going?" And you just say, "Nowhere." And they're like, "I'm in." So now your your buddies are in the car because they can't wait to get into a car, you know, and just drive. And then now you're taking bets on how long you know the tank of gas will last, which means to see the winner, you have to run out of gas. So you never even make it to the bar that where they're gonna burn down the town, right? So the song would actually go like. Ran out of gas on the highway. I asked my buddy if he had AAA. Called AAA. What did they say? The tow truck is three hours away. Took out our phones. Started playing Wordle. He got it faster. I admit that hurt a little. I mean, that's, that's what the song would be. But no, it's badass to drive all night. It's fucking badass to drive all night. Can't remember much because he was he paid for drinks. He he was he was doing shit you've never seen before. He was buying drinks and he drank a lot of them. And now he can't remember what uh, he did because he was in a blackout, an alcohol induced blackout. Location changes almost every other night. That's my favorite line in the song so far. It's like, it's not every night. They're almost every night. So for the most part, you're not gonna see them in the same bar two nights in a row, but you might, because the location changes almost every night. It's my favorite line in the song so far. Yeah. His lawyer wakes him up, which means that it could have been like a drunken disorderly or something like that. Could have gotten into a fight. Could have been public urination. But because he's talking so much about driving, I'm going to say that, you know, he got behind the wheel, which means that he got a DUI. He, he likes drinking and driving, which is nice. You know, there's never any problems with that. Um, so, you know, thing is, is he loves drinking and driving and doing some shit we've never seen before. But he doesn't want to go to jail. He doesn't want to go to San Quentin. Testify that I was right out of my mind. So, okay, so he's drunk, right? But let the record show, he did it all for rock and roll, right? That's my new favorite line in the song. Let the record show that, yes, he was drunk 
and he was driving and he possibly plowed into a family of four, but he did it all for distorted power cords. You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine that court? You know, he's got his lawyer, you gotta think the Nuge maybe, calls in the Nuge, he's got some of his buddies who are hanging out in the courtroom, maybe crackers on the team too. Now your honor, my client was high on booze and I never touched any of that stuff. I was addicted to girls. But you know, he did it all for rock and roll. Now the judge is thinking about it, but doesn't even have to because the father of the family realizes that he was doing it for rock and roll. And they decide that, you know what? I think it's best that we drop the charges, even though they lost their entire family. Well, that kicks maximum ass. I need to take a break. I got to slam a hot one if I'm going to get through the rest of this fucking song. So the second reason why I'm doing Nickelback now is because if you've been watching my channel at all, you'll know that August is Falling isn't the only fake band that I have. Don't forget about my fake scumbag band, Tortured Act. I think they ripped me off. I mean, how could they rip off a parody? Is that even possible? Like they rip off a parody, my own parody of their band and then they come around and rip off my version of, of them. Got out on bail. We hit the dead man trail. Gonna drink some liquor. Gonna wake up in jail. Too many favors. Too much to drink. Blue red lights in my rear view all night. Come 6 a.m. They had me back inside the clink. I'm gonna wake up in jail. You know. Guns will fire, fire will burn into the ground. Obviously, it comes from them, but at the same time, I feel like Dead Man Trails like bringing it a little harder than Nickelback. I mean, think about it. San Quentin, the guy doesn't want to go to jail. Can somebody please keep me hell out of San Quentin? But, you know, Tortured Agony's song, like, the guy's ready. My problems, my problems, my problems, my pain. So that's what leads me to the third reason why I had to do Nickelback. I feel like it's alienating the core Nickelback fan. I feel like, you know, obviously 19 year old girls love this song. You know, what do college kids want to hear more than, you know, a near 50 year old man singing about how he doesn't want to go to jail. So that's obvious that, that that's the target audience there. But I'm thinking that Chad turned his back on his fans. But those attractive co-eds, you know, they were, they were born when How You Remind Me came out. I'm talking about the fan that's been there since day one. I'm talking about, you know, a guy, let's call him Tommy Turtle. You know, to Tommy Turtle, it's a good name. You know, there he is. Uh, you know, and he like he heard how you remind me, and and he loved it immediately. Went out and bought the CD. Didn't rock quite hard enough for him. How you remind me? And he heard that song. I like your pants around your feet song. I like your pants around your feet. And that was the one. That was the one that sold him. And he said, you know what? This is my favorite band. So, you know, Tommy Turtle's going out. He's 20, 21 years old. You know, he's going down to Hawkers where he's meeting his buddies. You know, he shows up. Everybody flips out. It's Tommy Turtle. 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 Your Turtle. 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 Hey, Tommy. Hits him with his classic line. Oh, the fucking turtle's coming out of the shell tonight. And they all go crazy. They love when he says the turtle's coming out of the shell tonight. Goes over to Touch Tunes, puts on Nickelback. You know, they drink a lot and then they drive. They have a great time. Years go by, now he's 35, 36 years old, and he's still showing up to Hawkers. You know, and he's still coming in like they're going to give it to him, but nobody knows who he is. Oh, the turtle's coming out of the shell tonight. I mean, all of his boys have families, and, but not Tommy Turtle. He never settled down. Turtle's moving a little slow. I'm trying to get some blow. But you can't really blame Tommy Turtle because he's been listening to his favorite band for the last 20 years, and all they keep telling him to do is drink. I got a fist full of whiskey, the bottle just bit me. Drink up, we fall down, then we do it all again. All around, build a rock, hammer down, grab a cup, bottoms up. So he's down and out, but at least he still has nickel back, so he's sitting at the bar, puts on the new video, and notices that. You know, they don't look like they've been drinking. They don't look like they've been driving. 
They're playing at a college? Where, where, does, where do I fit into this world? That's what Tommy Turtle's saying. These guys look way too healthy. I've been out here partying like a rock star, burning shit to the ground, drinking and driving. All for what? So that these people don't want to go to jail? I don't care about going to jail anymore. And he loses the flame. He doesn't want to drink and drive anymore. Oh. Until somebody puts on a new song by a new band about not caring about going to jail. Now Tommy perks up a little bit. Turtle's starting to come out of the shell. He's not just sinking down into the bar anymore. He's ready to get back out there and burn shit down to the ground. He's ready to drink and drive again. Oh, the fucking turtle's coming out of the shell tonight. Tommy Turtle. Uh, so yeah, that, that, was, that was a nice little story there. Um, so that was pretty much the, the main reason why I wanted to do this particular Nickelback song. And also, they gave me an opportunity to finally showcase something that I've wanted to do for a long time. So when I originally put out Dead Man Trail, um, there were a bunch of covers of it, which were all awesome. And there was like a country version. Going down on a dead man trail, going to drink some liquor, going to in jail. The guy who did like a jazzy Christmas version of it. Going down on a dead man trail on a drink, gonna wake up in jail. But there was one in particular that absolutely blew my mind. And it's this guy, Holy Book of Wang. And uh, he, he buried my dead man trail. He blazed me out, man. It was totally like a, all along the watchtower. You know, he was Jimmy, I'm, I'm Bob, uh, as far as like, you know, dead man trail goes. And uh, wait till you see this thing. His voice is getting incredible. It's better than the Nickelback guys. And uh, you're really gonna enjoy it. So on that note, that's the last time I'm ever gonna talk about Nickelback. I'm sorry for talking about Nickelback, but this guy's fucking amazing. You're gonna love it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't click the link below. Are you motherfuckers ready to rock? Yes, sir. I saw you die. Are you motherfuckers ready to rock? One, two, three, uh.